Hi, I'm Shannon Brown and I'm with CC Testing Services and today I'm going to help you to understand your student scoring report. So come on, take a look. Alright, so we'll put it up on our here. So you've been to our website or you received an email telling you your student's report was ready. You downloaded it and here's what you have. So if it's usually three pages. One, two, three. If you have a second grader or a ninth through twelfth grader, your report is only two pages. Alright, so you've got this in your hands. What do you do? So I'm going to kind of walk you through what I would do when I look at these reports. Or even when you call me and say, Shannon, can you help me? I don't understand this. So this is what I'll do with you. Okay, so up here, in the, up here you have, let's take a closer look. You normally have your student's name, grade, student ID, date of birth, and then over in the other corner, no, we're going to go, you'll have your um, classical conversations as your district, and then your school will be listed. And that's usually the location that you tested at. All right, so let's come over and look at the subject. So, what is on a sixth grade test? Here, I've actually highlighted, yours doesn't come highlighted, but I've highlighted the subject. So, vocabulary is a section on the test. Reading comprehension is a section. Math problem solving is a section. Math procedures is a section. Language is a section. Science, oops, excuse me, that's spelling. Then we have science, social science, and listening. The other stuff are other stuff that they're asking you, like you have your thinking skills basics. That is not actually a separate test. Those are like built-in questions. They're embedded in other questions. So they're seeing how well you're have your thinking, using your thinking skills. Then we have a basic battery and a complete battery. Those are um, the basic battery includes all of your scores except science and social science. And the complete battery includes everything, including science and social science. And it gives you, um, we'll look at it in a minute, but it kind of takes all your kids, the, all the subjects, puts it in a little blender, shakes it up, and tells you how your student did overall. So let's, um, let's go here. Let's look at these columns, which are often misunderstood. So RS, that is what we call the raw score. And that is the number correct your student answered. Not the number they answered, but the number correct they answered. And the next column is max points, and that stands for how many questions there were. So for instance, this little girl, and we're going to call her a girl, um, she, she got 71 out of 84 correct. Okay, and then you can do see that for all the subjects. But the next column is called the scaled score. And scaled score, statisticians use that. Um, there's a lot, not much to say about the scaled score. What we're really, those are like people in the schools that are made to study all of the school's test results. That's what they, they look at scaled score. But um, really all you want to see for scaled score is that your student's scaled score goes up every year. Okay, the next one, this is the number of people like this one. This is the percentile, the rank PR. And that is where your student stood in um, a group of 100 students. So what Stanford 10 does, they have what we call the norming groups. And every well, five to seven years, they will renorm their test. And what that is, is they take a group of about 400,000 students who took the Stanford 10, they take their scores, they compile it into the computer, and they figure out average scores in every subject. And then that's where they come up with their standard deviations, and they come up with their stainines, and they, this is where they get all that information. So um, 71 right here, that doesn't mean, that's a very misunderstood score. Uh, 70, 71 for percentile rank, does that not mean that your child scored a 71 on this test? It means that in a group of, like I said, 100 kids, that your student's score was at 71 in the percentile rank. That means 70 students scored less than your student and 29 scored higher than your student. So that's not, 
you know, 71 according to grade, if we took a grade, like a test, that's really close to getting a D. Um, but that's not at all what this means. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next um, stainides, ST9. And the percentile rank, the stainides, the NCE, and the GE, those are all um, what they call the norm reference scores. Like I said, I referred to that earlier. That's where they, they pull that group of students, um, all their scores together, and that's where they come up with this information. So the stainides, let's see. We have the bell chart. We're going to look at the bell chart. So let's take a big picture of the bell chart. I'm sorry, sure you've all seen a bell chart. If you've taken statistics, you've seen a bell chart. And we've got our bell chart from, we're going to look at We've got ours from users, I'm just going to give credit here, userswfu.edu. Okay, so that's where we got um, our bell curve. Okay, so stain eyes. You see this group that's shaded in the middle? That's the average. That's where most of the kids scored, okay? That's where, like I said, most of the kids scored. So if they get a stain on of four, five, and six, that means they're in the average, okay? So you see four, five, and six, and then you see where they normally would be in percentile rank, and their NCE, and then their average, okay? If they score one, two, or three, they're getting further away from that norm, standard deviation-wise. So they're gonna get a one, two, or three. And you see the percentiles of these students are usually four, seven, and 12%. So it's, it's um, a lot smaller, group score in there. And then again, if you do seven, eight, and nine, that is above average. So you're getting, again, further away from the curve, but in the off, I mean, sorry, the norm, but in the opposite direction. Okay, and that's where also the next um, thing on our is normal curve equivalent, and that's also where those scores come from. You'll see the normal curve equivalent in there. Let's see if we can grab that. But again, you can find this chart. This is just like a the bell curve in many, many places on the web. You know, you can look on a website or a statistics book. Okay, so let's get back to our report. Okay. So the next thing we have, so stain eyes. That's where you can get one through nine can be your score. And if you're in the four, five, and six range, it means your average, okay? Um, we're gonna, like I said, the NCE comes from that, that bell curve also, and you can look at a bell curve to see that. But the next one is a grade equivalent, and this is really, really misunderstood. Okay, so this student scored a grade equivalent of the sixth month of the ninth year. So, people, kids that, she would score the same as kids that are like halfway through ninth grade. Now remember, she's a sixth grader. So that does not mean that she's ready to jump up and do ninth grade work. It just means that she scored as well on the test as an average ninth grade six month student. Okay. All right, let's look at the next one. We have it's PERF, and I have a cheat sheet for that, sorry. That is, let's see. This is the performance standard, and you can get a below basic which indicates less than partial mastery. You can get a basic, which indicates partial mastery of the knowledge. You can get proficient, which is the PROF, and that indicates solid academic performance and readiness for the next grade level. And then you could get advanced. Indicates superior mastery beyond the grade level. So you're definitely you understood the student has understood the material and is ready to move on. Okay. So we're gonna um, next one is the Lexile measurement, and that's that little tiny score. Oops, right there. And if you follow it back, it would go to read, um, reading comprehension. So it has to do with reading comprehension. So here. It's just a Lexile measure we pulled from the internet. Let's give credit. Credit's due. Okay, Lexile.com. Okay, so this gives grade level. So estimated grade level, you see 1 through 12, and then you're seeing the Lexile measurement, what it should be. Okay, um, so 
that is, we had a lot of people asking for this score. And what that is, is a lot of the young readers, really pretty much elementary school, will have, if you turn the front cover, they'll have a Lexile measure in there, me measurement in there. And that kind of tells, if, is your student ready to read this material? So if your student had a Lexile measure of, like this student right here, 990, so I'm going to just go back to this. Look, so 990. So she's scoring right here. As you see this, look. She is scoring in the ninth grade level. So you see how that corresponds? She's right in that ninth to tenth grade level in between there. So that's, again, this is taking so many parts to come up with all this information. So that kind of corresponds to the GE, the grade equivalent, because we said it was ninth month, sixth month of ninth year. Okay, so again, what does that mean? So if she got a reader that had like a 1300 in it or 1200, she's probably not gonna be able to comprehend much of that book because it's gonna be above her. But if she got a book that had a um, Lexile measure of around a thousand, she could easily read that book. She would understand the, comp the vocabulary in it. It would be on her level. So a lot of parents with younger students like to use that Lexile measure. Okay, we're going to be done for now, and we're going to come back with another video. Okay, bye.